In this video, we will take you back to July of 1864, when Washington DC was under attack by Confederate forces. With only a small number of poorly trained soldiers to defend the US Capitol, President Abraham Lincoln faced the enemy head-on, nearly getting shot in the process. Washington DC was hot and humid on July 11, 1864, and fear settled over the city like a heavy fog. A foreign army had invaded the United States Capitol once again, 50 years after the British burned it during the War of 1812. Now, Confederate forces were marching down 7th Street Pike, kicking up clouds of dust from the surrounding pastures. The sight of the unfinished Capitol Dome loomed in the distance, a reminder of what was at stake. The Union Capitol had never been in such danger during the Civil War. To make matters worse, Union General Ulysses S. Grant had recently sent most of the 23,000 soldiers guarding Washington to help in the siege of Richmond, Virginia, the Confederate capital. This left only a small, poorly trained group of 9,000 soldiers to defend DC. Now the Confederates were approaching, threatening the very heart of the United States. Confederate General Robert E. Lee was desperate. His military was losing the war, and he needed to make a daring move. He turned to Lieutenant General Jubal Early, a fierce and daring leader, to attack the political, economic, and military center of the Union. With 15,000 troops, General Early marched north through Virginia's Shenandoah Valley. They entered Union territory on July 5th. They encountered Union forces at Monocacy Junction in Maryland on July 9th, and a battle ensued. The Union soldiers were eventually forced to retreat, allowing the Confederates to continue on towards DC. Washington officials called on all able-bodied people to defend the city. Government clerks were given muskets, and more than 3,000 injured soldiers emerged from hospital wards limping and crawling to help protect the capital. U.S. President Abraham Lincoln had been watching the day's events through a spyglass from a White House window. The enemy was only five miles away at Fort Stevens, and a warship on the Potomac River waited to evacuate him to safety. In the distance, artillery shots boomed. Lincoln rushed to his carriage and traveled to the Riverside Wharves. There, he met the two divisions of the Union Army's 6th Corps, sent by Grant. These were battle-hardened troops ready to face the advancing enemy. In a show of determination, rather than evacuating, Lincoln chose to personally lead his troops to the battle at Fort Stevens. As he made his way to the front line, he saw fallen soldiers being carried away on stretchers and numerous civilians fleeing in the opposite direction to escape the fighting. Even before the Battle of Fort Stevens, Lincoln was known for being involved in his role as Commander-in-Chief. He was not afraid to test fire rifles himself on the grounds of the White House. When the battle began, Lincoln surprised Confederate sharpshooters by standing on the fort's walls. He stood confidently, dressed in a dark suit and wearing his iconic stovepipe hat. The Confederates were ready to launch a full assault on Fort Stevens, but they were afraid of the defenses set up around it. General Early didn't want to tire his soldiers out in the heat, so they waited. Meanwhile, Confederate snipers were shooting from hidden places like trees, cornfields, and houses. Suddenly, a shot rang out and came close to striking the president. The close call with the sniper shocked those around him, creating a moment of suspense and uncertainty about what might happen next. A soldier yelled at Lincoln to get down. While U.S. President James Madison had been near the battle during the British attack on D.C. 50 years earlier, Lincoln may have been the only American president to face enemy gunfire while in office.
Washington, D.C. had been fortified for years, and the defenses held steady during the first day of battle. President Lincoln returned to the White House later that day, unconcerned about the Capitol's safety. The next morning, General Early woke up to a disheartening sight. Through his field glasses, he saw Union reinforcements arriving in droves. He knew that a full-out attack would be hopeless, but he decided to keep fighting until nightfall when he could retreat under cover of darkness. Later that day, the president and his wife, Mary Todd, went back to the battlefield. They comforted injured soldiers. Afterwards, when Mary Todd returned to their carriage, Lincoln climbed the fort's wall once again to get a better view of the fight. Suddenly, a shot was fired, and a Union doctor fell to the ground with a leg wound just three feet from Lincoln. As fighting raged on, Colonel Oliver Wendell Holmes Jr., a future Supreme Court Justice, shouted at Lincoln to take cover. Lincoln listened and left the battlefield safe and unharmed. But before he left, he gave his personal approval to fire upon the houses that Confederate snipers were hiding in. As the night crept in, General Early retreated, and two days later, he and his Confederate soldiers crossed back over the Potomac River, ending their threat to the capital forever. Fort Stevens is currently preserved and maintained by the National Park Service. It is the only remaining part of the battlefield, while the rest of the area was developed after 1925. The Battleground National Cemetery, where 40 Union soldiers killed in the battle are buried, is located nearby. In addition, 17 Confederate soldiers are buried at Grace Episcopal Church, located just north of Silver Spring, Maryland. Let us know your thoughts in the comments section. If you like this video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button, subscribe for more videos like this, and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching the History Stop, and we'll see you next time.